Um, I would normally say, oh, I'm not topless. I've just got a, a towel wrapped around me or uh, I've got a strapless top on. But I am topless, so guess what I'm doing? <laughs> Been out this morning. We went to the shops again because... I just, I've, I've been stuck in the house all week. Um, the last time I left the house was the last vlog you watched. So, yeah, I've been quite um, cabin fevery. I went out on Monday on my own <clears throat> with the baby um, in the little, oh, I don't know what you call it, the carrier thing that you put them on your front. Um, that was my first time I've been out alone with her. And it was fine. Just went down to the shops, got some milk, walked back up. It was nice. But then the last few days have been absolutely boiling, roasting hot. I'm sure you're aware. Um, so it was 27 degrees in our bedroom the first day, was it? Yeah. And then the second day it was 29. So 27 degree day. I was like, oh my god, what am I gonna what am I meant to do? Like I've no idea. So spent most of the day on Google, like trying to figure out how to look after a newborn in boiling hot weather. Um because like you're not meant to give them water anymore and all that kind of thing. But then health visitors are saying it's okay to give them water, but then if they're breastfed, then they don't need water and oh anyway. So it's just been a really confusing couple of days. But Dot's been amazing. She's been really good. Like we've just she's just been in a nappy and vest basically for uh, two days. But it's been a lot cooler today. It's really cloudy, but there's been a massive thunderstorm. So it's really hot and humid. But at least it's nice and cold in the house again. So I was intending just to, you know, take Dot out myself. I was like, okay, I've got the carrier, I've got the nappy bag, but then how am I meant to do anything if I've got a strap to the front of me and I need something from the nappy bag behind me? So I want to, you know, I'm going to have to take the pram. But I'm really scared. I've not, I've, I bet I've pushed the pram for maybe two minutes the whole time she's been born because Dan just loves pushing her. I think he pretends he's driving a car. I was like, but... I'm still going to have to go on the bus because I don't drive. Ugh. I don't really want to go on public transport, but I've got to get out of this house today. Because um, I need more stuff for her. Like, I've got loads of newborn stuff. And then I've got that's tiny that doesn't fit her anymore. And then I've got loads of like not to three month stuff, but it's too big for her. So I need stuff that's like in the middle. And socks as well, because the socks I've bought don't fit her. So it's just been like, I need to get out, I need to do something. I text my sister and I was like, um, don't suppose you're at work today, are you? She was like, no, I'm not. Um, the the boys are making me uh, clear out the conservatory with them and take everything to the tip. So unless you need me, brackets, please need me, um, then yeah, I'll come, you know. So, um, so she came over and yeah, it took us about an hour to leave the house. Cause I was like, oh, well, I'm just feeding her now. So if we leave in the next hour, um, then she'll be nice and settled in the car while we're there and I won't need to feed her and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, she took ages to feed. Um, and that's another thing as well in this heat. She's not really wanted to breastfeed, I guess, cause I'm hot. And I'm holding her against me. Um, you know, she's just not been interested in breastfeeding. She slept really well last night. Um, we had, I got four hours and she woke up. Had about ten minutes on the boob and then was fast asleep again until six o'clock this morning. So that's been really good. Dan's been back at work this week. Um, he's been working like ten till six every day which is fine the days days go really fast because like i don't know you're just thinking about the next feed aren't you like right two hours three hours you know anyway when she's finished feeding i'm going to show you everything that i bought in the shops 
that the cat, Herbie, decided to eat a bird the other day. And I believe he's got something stuck in his throat. So he keeps going, <coughs> but he's eating and drinking fine. So I'm not calling the vet until he's in agony. But he seems absolutely fine. Like we've picked him up and cuddled him and he's purring. He seems absolutely fine. He just seems to have like a bit of a cough. So I think he's got like a feather stuck in his throat. <laughs> Ooh, you're going to have my nipple stuck in your throat if you suck any harder. All done. Oh, little baby. Fast asleep, Bebo. So the cats have brought us two birds and a bat that didn't have any wings or a head. <laughs> They're trying really hard to impress us. <laughs> so yeah, I had to like shut all the doors and make sure, you know, the cat could not get into any rooms in case he coughed and was sick or something. <sighs> but I'm really, really hoping he's gonna be all right because I really, really do not wanna be dealing with cat sick everywhere. <laughs> When there's baby sick everywhere. <laughs> oh, look at that pile of ironing behind me. Oh. Um, an interesting thing I had to do today was um, go to the toilet with a baby attached to the front of me. <sighs> that was fun. Um, yeah, I mean, it was uh, easier than I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't easy. Um, Something I never thought I'd have to do, but I was. I said to my sister, I said, "Look, I'm just gonna have to give it a go, like see if I can manage it, because it's not like I'm always gonna have somebody there to give the baby to, is it? You know, to hold while I go for a wee. It's not gonna be like that, is it? So, yeah, it was fine. I managed it. <laughs> I went. I actually looked at like the baby changing room, and uh, it was a great big room with a you know great big tall high table for me to change on but didn't actually have a toilet in there so I'm thinking if I've got a pram and I'm on my own what do I do like how how do you go to the toilet in public places and when I went into Boots there was a parent room but of course it was closed because of um you know COVID-19 and everything so I don't know there's so much to learn there's so much to figure out are you waking up? I thought you were going to fall asleep. You fell asleep while you were eating, didn't you? And every time Mummy tried to paint her nails yesterday, you woke up, didn't you? So I have no false eyelashes and I have no nails. It's okay. We're not seeing anybody, are we? You're pulling some funny faces, madam. I can't believe how big she is. Isn't she just enormous? Oh, she's five weeks old today, aren't you? You're five weeks old today. It's a little bit flaky. You had a bath last night, didn't you? You're going to look at us. You had a bath last night, didn't you? Yeah. Ooh, big strong girl. <laughs> you had a bath last night. That's why you're a bit flaky and dry again. You started smiling, haven't you? Mm, we're boring you. Yeah, she's saying, shut up, Mum. Your vlogs are so boring. <laughs> Listen. Thunder. Ooh, all the doggies are going mad. All the doggies are going mad at the thunder. Oh, Bebo, what are you going to do with a little smile? No, you're too sleepy. You're a bit milky drunk. Where have you gone? <laughs> Are you asleep with your eyes open? <laughs> Are you looking? Are you looking at mummy? Baby! Oh, you're falling asleep, aren't you? You're falling asleep, aren't you? Okay. Let's pop you down. Are you squeezing a poop out? <laughs> you 
You've already done a poo today. When Daddy was here, you're supposed to wait until Daddy comes home. Baby bird. <laughs> Baby bird face. This is my favourite face that she does. These little lips. These little whips. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Sorry, I'm just entertaining myself with my child's face. Oh, you mind. Technically, I can do what I want with you. And if I want to squidge your cheeks, <laughs> then I'll squidge them. If I want to squidge your cheeks, I'll squidge them. <laughs> this is something I bought for her last weekend. How good is this? And you can use it for tummy time. And she loves it, don't you, baby? better we can see you. She absolutely loves it, especially for tummy time. Like she falls asleep on her front, it's so cute. And she sleeps really soundly. But yeah, look how big you are! Look how big you are! It's good for breastfeeding as well. And when she can sit up properly, we can like sit her up in the little ring in the middle. So that you, if you fall over, you fall back onto something. Super good baby. All right, um, let's see what I've got. Put everything into this giant Primark bag. To me, there's no better sound than like the crinkle of a Primark bag. <laughs> However, we're gonna be starting with um, boots or whatever comes from top. Got some mam dummies. Now, she loves mam dummies. I've tried two of the different kinds, but she likes these ones the best. Um, and the reason I got these ones is because um, the ones that she's got don't seem to fit on her dummy chain, you know, like to keep the dummies attached to them. So when they spit it out, they don't lose it because it's attached to them. But this has got holes on the side, so I'm hoping that's gonna stay. Um, one for Mummy, my favourite bronzer, Physician's Formula in the light shade. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I took out all my um, lash extensions. So I'm back to my normal lashes, which I'm not doing great, to be honest. But I realised the last time I bought mascara was August last year. Wow. And it's just about dried out finish, so I bought a new... Um, favourite mascara which is the Maybelline Lash Sensation. It's fantastic. I bought this Baby Grow from Boots. It was six pounds or you could get two for nine pounds but there wasn't another one that I liked so I just got that one. It's got little sketchy dinosaurs on it which is very cute. I've got loads of things with dinosaurs on it for her actually. Next we went to H&M and I bought a lint roller because cat hair you know. But I figured I'd keep this one um, with the uh, car chair because I don't know what the fabric is of this car chair, but it's, it seems to attract hairs and lint. So this is going to be a specific uh, baby car, car seat. So also from H&M, I've got this set of three short baby grows. They've got poppers all the way down the front. So of course anything with dots on we get because she's Dolly Dot. So the white with pink spots and a really pale pink and then a darker pink with some very light little white polka dots. So love those. I got them in size two to four months but they look massive to me. We'll see. And then mummy treated herself to a shirt because breastfeeding and it's not, it's sort of like a, it's really thin, like it's nearly see-through, but I love pink, like I always wear black or pink or grey basically. Um, it's lovely and thin, I got it in the biggest size they had, which was a 16, so it'll be nice and airy, but I can always unbutton it to pop my boobs out. And I also thought we'd kind of match a little bit, 
which I'm all about. I'm all about the mini me outfits. And then Primark, we got some socks because she's outgrown the newborn ones. So they're just like some little frilly, frilly pink socks. And then because she's got loads of monochrome stuff, I've got a bunch of um, black, white and grey socks as well. Now the main reason we went to Primark is because um, I need some more cami vests to wear under my clothes for breastfeeding. So I've got grey and black, they're £1.80, which I thought was brilliant. Some more not three size baby grows because <laughs> I have loads of newborn ones and they don't fit her anymore. <laughs> um, but I've got loads of long sleeve ones with feet. But I want some short sleeve ones um, without feet. So we've got this pack of six. Oh, seven. So it was seven suits for seven pounds, which is awesome. But they've got dots, smiles and giggles. I don't like stuff with things written on it, but, you know, for seven quid. Um, some little bunny rabbits. My mummy. What does it say? I got it from my mummy. Oof. God. Um, more bunny rabbits and black and pink stripes, which I love. The next couple of things I got are way too big for her. They're not going to fit her for a very long time, but they were so gorgeous. And I thought, Do you know what? She's going to grow and get bigger. So I love a denim shirt. I'm always in a denim shirt. Um, so I'm, I got her a little denim shirt because it had stars and moons embroidered on it and i'd love i like i would wear this <laughs> i absolutely love that what size is that 18 to 24 months so she's not wearing it for a long time unless she wears it as a dress and this is pretty big as well i think this is oh, eight, 12 to 18 months but that looks apps it's like a little um short sleeved vesty jumpsuit can't really see can you but the uh, model the dummy was wearing this and it looked gorgeous with a little straw hat couldn't resist it for three quid uh another cami top for me but this one was four pounds um because it's got hidden um support in there as well which will be nice because i won't have to wear a bra if it's super hot weather <laughs> since lockdown wearing a bra has become a really difficult thing <laughs> Another cami top. Right, these were last minute purchases as we were coming to the till. As you can imagine, the queues were mental in Primark. Um, I think I think we were probably waiting about 10 minutes. But um, we're going to meet my brother in a park on Sunday um, in Leicester, which is like, well, it's not halfway between London and here, but, you know, it's so he doesn't have to come all the way up here because he's not actually met her yet because he lives in London, my brother. So I've got this picnic rug, like a fold-up Velcro one, pink and green, which I thought was really nice. It's got handle Velcro, so it folds up nice and uh, compact. Last thing we got was this pink cool bag. It was four quid, but it's the perfect size for fitting in um, bottles milk bottles when we're out and about it's just the right height for bottles and stuff um and i've got some ice packs i can put in the bottle bottom as well so i thought that was a good little purchase for four quid yeah small cool bag for four quid i thought that was really good I hope this bronzer is the right one the packaging's different but it says it's physician's formula butter bronzer but it has the most amazing coconut -y tropical smell Yes, it's the same one. Change the packaging. It's a lot more upper class looking. Upper class. God, what am I like? Um, it looks a lot nicer, this new packaging. It was a bit cheap, shall I say, looking before. Underneath it has this little mirror. And for some bizarre reason, it's got a silicone applicator. I don't know what that's for. You're so strong, baby. Look at that dribble. <laughs> Get off me, Mum. You're gonna just <laughs> ooh, 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 baby. Hi. Baby. She won't go to sleep. Look who's here. Dan. How has it been back at work, Dan? Hmm? Not too bad. Uh it made me laugh because he uh 
went to work. They spaced all the tables apart. He works in a pub, in case you didn't know. Spaced all the tables apart, two metres. Came home from work and then Boris said, oh, you can have it one metre apart. <laughs> so they had to go back to work the next day and move them all a bit closer. Did you do that? Or yeah. Have you? Yeah. And then you never guess what he said after that. What? I've not told you. No. He says the tables have to be two metres apart. But the, oh. we were going back. He said, first he said the chairs have to be back to back, two metres apart. Right. Then he said the chairs back to back have got to be one metre apart. Now we're saying the tables have to be two metres apart where there are chairs facing the table, but that table side to side can be 1.5 metres. Brilliant. Where's that dummy come? And uh, they've, um, what's here? And they put scaffolding in the middle of the pub anyway, so they had to take all the tables. Oh, anyway, yeah. So the full day wasted. The building is a listed building, <clears throat> and there's some kind of damage up there. So, right. Anyway, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> so, we were wandering around. Where's your dummy gone? I'm telling you, it's all just like, <laughs> just swallowed it. Where's it gone? Oh, it's there. Um, so, I was carrying Dot in the front in a sling. And my sister's disabled, so she has walking stick. What are you doing? Hot. Oh. So um, we got into the queue for H&M. And we just joined the queue. And the security guard walks up to this woman who was with her mum. And she had a push chair. And he said... <laughs> And they turned and walked away and I was like, where are they going? And then he comes to me and Sophie, my sister, and says, you can't be in this queue. And we were like, why are we going into H&M? And he said, you can't, you can't join this queue. The queue's too long. I'm bouncing off. Um, you can't join this queue. Why don't you pick her up for a minute? Yeah. I'm just covering and shit, Baldur. It's okay. Do you cover and shit? Yeah, I cover shit. She's full of shit. She's a baby. So, you can't be in this queue. I says, why? We're, we're queuing for H&M. Hmm. Yeah, but the queue's too long. Where's the queue queue? I was like, what do you mean? He said, it's too busy. You can't go in. And I said, well, that's why we're in a queue. And he said, look. You're going to have to go and sit down somewhere for a bit. I said, we can't sit down anywhere. It's too busy. And he said, well, you're the one that picked to come shopping on the busiest day of the year. And my sister looked at him and said, how did we know today was the busiest day of the year? Did we Google it? Hmm. Well, you can't stand here because you're blocking a fire exit, he was about to say. Were you? Well, we bollocks. There was a big... Oh, right. There was a, I was about to move to stand in front of this fire exit. But thankfully, the waiting dot in front of me, not this dot, hmm. circle where you're supposed to stand to wait, became free. And I said, are you going to make... A woman carrying a baby and a disabled woman walk around when we'd really don't need to. And he said, look, right, I'm just trying to do my job here. And I interrupted him and went, they've moved now. Can we stand in that spot? And he was like, oh, yeah, go on then. It was absolutely ridiculous. Like, every single security guard there, I know they're trying to do the jobs, but they're all like ego tripping bastards. If you want to go to Primark, you've got to go that way. No, you can't stand there. It's one way. <clears throat> there needs to be a sign at the end where the dots are saying no more queuing past this point. Well, you will be turned away. When we were, yeah. If you could see that sign, you'd be like, oh, or I guess we'll come back later. They need to put a sign in front of the fire exit saying don't stand in front of the fire exit. Yeah. Or yeah, mark a bit out on the ground. Yeah. yeah. That's all they need to do. Like on the roads, where it says don't block the road, it's got the crosses, doesn't it? But, um, and also, because we were we we're in a shopping centre, and there's loads of shops and people everywhere. Oh, they also said on the tunnel at one point, the lower floor is at capacity. 
Anybody on the upper floor may not go downstairs. That was mad. Um, but the the dots on the floor wait here. The lower floor. Yeah. Because you can't really control people like that. Your lower floor capacity is your building capacity. Well, they had people at the tops of the stairs and the escalators not letting people go up or down. What like, if there's a fire? I don't know. Then they'll have to go to the fire exit so that's blocked. Queue, so you have to queue to go downstairs. Yeah. And, oh, that's mental. That's just mental. Right. My sister, I, like, I, I, when I have confrontations with people, I kind of laugh about it afterwards. But my sister gets really annoyed, doesn't she? She's, yeah. like, fuming for the next five days about it. But she, she only, like, said about the Google thing. It was me having to get... And anyway, when we walked away from him... Oh, that's what I was going to say. It's so busy and there's dots everywhere where to queue. It should say on the dots what shop it's for. Yeah. Because it's really confusing. Anyway, so we, we walked in, carried on walking into this queue for H&M. And she said, I'm so glad you, I'm so glad you started arguing with him because she was about to walk away. I'm so glad you started arguing because we would have had to walk around... And, he's, and he said, you know, go and sit somewhere. And, you know, we can't sit anywhere. There shouldn't be any seats, really. I shouldn't encourage you, people you, sitting. You can sit on benches, but you can't sit on certain bits of them. It's, like, marked out. Mm. Don't sit on this bit of a bench. But, like, I were kind of laughing about the whole, you know, situation. I was like, I can't believe how rude he is. Like, there's no need for him to speak to... A woman with a baby like that raises his voice and spe you know a disabled woman and I'm really glad that I was like are you are you gonna say, are you gonna make a disabled woman and a pregnant you know a woman carrying a baby walk around but I thought he, I bet he's really stressed out because they opened at eleven and I think we got there at maybe twelve and it was mental but it was nice it wasn't as busy as it was on a Saturday. Yeah, busy, less busy than normal. And everything was distance, one yeah. way, which I think they need to keep. Yeah, it always should be like that. Yeah. Should be little roads on the ground mapped out for you yeah. to walk. Definitely. But I think it will now, to be honest. I think they're going to have to be like that. The queue for Greg's was massive. So I haven't eaten anything oh. apart from that bagel oh. this morning. Are you dropping the baby? <laughs> yeah. Have you eaten anything? Uh, I went to the shop to get some. I'm st I am starving though. I'm hungry. What did you have? Uh, bacon and egg. <gasps> bacon and egg. She's a little egg. Right, I'll go make tea then because I'm starving as yes, well. Yes, please. It's something Mexican-y, I think. Ooh. Where's the sick on your leg? I wiped it off straight away. <laughs> uh, we've been to Asta. And it was quite good. Dan wore the baby. And uh, and I just wandered around and did all the shopping. I always spend more when I'm in charge of the trolley. She got really screamy in the back of the car. Oh, yeah, we managed to go to Subway. But when we left Subway to get takeout, I mean, um, she was screaming. She was like, I am not, can't believe you've got yourself so food and you haven't fed me. So we had to pull over and I had to breastfeed her in the back of the car, which was... Uh, Quite dodgy actually, because it pulled onto like this industrial estate that was all shut up, and there's a security guard like, "What are you guys doing?" Anyway, uh, we timed coming home quite well because somebody has sent me a little parcel. Mister Hugh Rain of Thirty Seven Business Street. Hey, what? I'm going for a shit. Back You're going for a shit. Yeah. You're not finishing washing up then. I'm not washing. Right. So I hope I'm not cutting into whatever this is. But he sent me a message saying, oh, I bought you something, but you're probably not going to need it for another 18 months. So let's see what they are. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a world of love, a world of tears. It's a world of joy. It's a world of... Fears as a love that we share since everyone is a small world after all. Okay, I'm going to get copyright straight for that. These are It's a Small World placemats. 
How awesome. I love it. That is exactly what Dot is going to look like, by the way. Oh, aren't they gorgeous? Wipes clean easily. Everyday placemats. Thank you, Hugh. So we've got, um, I'm presuming Chinese lady. Indian lady. Dutch, maybe? Russian? And Irish, of course. And that is really generous. Thank you so much. They're massive, aren't they? Oh. I don't know what to do with them, because like he says, we're not going to need them for a while, but... <laughs> I think he said he put them on his wall, actually, because they are so cool. It's really thoughtful, like, because... I think I've mentioned in to him before how cool they are. I need to remember and sent them. Thank you very much, Hugh, of 37 Disney Street podcast. Um, if you like podcasts and you like Disney, you've got to listen to them because they're so good. It's Hugh, his wife Lucy, and their friend Chris. They all live at 37 Disney Street. <clears throat> they talk about Disney films, like they're working through them all. Um, they started right back at Snow White. And I think they've just done... Matt the Lion King, I think they've just done... But they do some like they do sort of do a few live action ones, but it's mainly the animated ones that they do. Um, and they also have the Disneyland Paris show as well. So they talk about updates about the park and what's going on there and stuff. And it's just lovely to listen to. And I I, I do know them like we are friends, but I feel like I really know them because the, they've all got such amazing personalities. They're all so lovely. Um, even though they are wrong sometimes about their opinions. <laughs> I won't mention Oliver and Company. I will link them down below. Uh, and they also have a YouTube channel as well. Um, Hugh and his wife Lucy go to Disney World, Disneyland quite often. Um, and they do vlogs as well. Well, they're not vlogs. They kind of are. They're kind of like a family video, but they're really artistically done because Hugh's a cartoonist. Um, so he's got a good eye, you know, for that kind of thing. So he shoots them quite nicely, you know. Hugh has this friend, actually, that um, uploads videos on his channel sometimes called Daz. And he does these great reviews, usually some kind of bath product or some drink or chocolates from B&M or Home Bargains, somewhere like that. Um, but he's, he's got a really good opinion of things and um, he rates things out of five stars. So yeah, I will link the Disneyland Paris show, 37 Disney Street podcast down below and Hugh's channel. Please check them out. Honestly, if you enjoy watching me, you will enjoy those as well. It's half past nine. Gosh, where's the day gone? Um, we're going out tomorrow. Um like first proper day out with baby. I know I went like to the shops and everything, but this is like, we're going to be miles from home. 75 miles from home, actually. We're going down to Leicester to see my brother. I think I mentioned it actually. Um, he's meeting us sort of halfway from London. So we're going to have a proper day out in a park and I'm terrified. <laughs> um, more about feeding than anything. So I ordered this off Amazon. It actually has four compartments. It's got a little yellow one as well. And the idea is you measure out the scoops of formula that you need into them and you sort of make your bottles as you go. So I've got a flask which will put boiling water in and I checked yesterday. It stays hot enough for seven hours because kept checking it sort of every half hour or whatever. Maybe not that often, maybe like every couple of hours to check its temperature and see if it was still hot enough to kill all the bacteria in the formula. And yeah, seven hours we've got. So I'm going to measure out into this um, four scoops of formula. Oh, that's what I was going to say about it. The top, I was like, this is totally pointless, this top. Like, I might as well have just got little containers, but actually this top... Um, wait a sec, how do I do it? Oh god, wait a sec. Ah, there. <clears throat> this top, you unscrew this bit and it's got this little narrow bottle thing. 
so that it can just tip straight into the bottle easily. Because like if it was a big thing like that, you'd have to kind of make sure it tipped in without spilling everywhere. But because it's got this little bottle top, it's really good. And it's not going to go everywhere and make a mess. So it was off Amazon and I think I just searched for, I don't know, baby formula containers or something like that. I don't know, if I remember I'll link it down below, but unlikely I will. <laughs> I'm going to breastfeed obviously as much as I can. That's it for the lid on. <laughs> um, I don't know if I mentioned yesterday, but it was really difficult to know what to do. But she was really, really well behaved. She was just quiet the whole day. Whereas today, she was a little bit more grizzly. I don't know if that's because she was attached to Dan and not me. Because obviously I'm a mummy. She's proper clingy with me. She's not proper clingy, but one, two, I just don't want to forget how many scoops I've done. Three, plus one, four. So that should be enough, more than enough. But I was really worried about how I was going to feed her. I was like, oh god, there's not going to be like a parent room or anything. There was one in Boots, but um, it was shut, obviously, due to the Rona. Okay, that's it. So there's powder and all those, so that means I've got three bottles worth of formula there. How good's that? I am stressed about tomorrow and this bottle thing being a nightmare. Um, so I did buy some ready-made formula, just in a bottle, which you can serve straight out of the bottle at room temperature, so that's good. But yeah, I'm stressed about it, I really am. I don't know whether to make a bottle now chill it in the fridge so it's ready to take with us and it's ready or just use oh do you know what I mean like you've got to figure out your own thing haven't you <sighs> stressed anyway you'll probably see us tomorrow me stressing out over how to feed a baby <laughs> like I know I can always breastfeed her that's fine but if I can't fill her up which is most of the time mm -hmm. I'm stressed about it but any tips <laughs> To all you mums out there, put them in the comments down below. Appreciate it. Good morning. It's not morning. Oh, it is. Just. Just. Know, half, half eleven. 11. Yeah. Um, we managed to leave the house not too late. I think we were about 20 minutes late setting off, which I didn't think was bad considering. Folks, um, do you want to line up along them cars there? Because the cars going to come in. It's very, very busy here. Where are we? Bradgate. Is that what you're saying? Is it, is it talking to Park. I have no idea. Yeah, you're fine here. I've literally brought everything and the kitchen sink. So, um, now we've got to pack it up into the pram. <laughs> And it was like, gosh, that was neat and tidy and lovely. And then got halfway through our tea and just noticed this little yellow patch on the side of her outfit. So uh undressed her and there was a lot of poo. So I was like, alright, okay, I'll you know take it off her and I'll I'll soak it and clean it and put some vanish spray in it and then I'll put it in the washing machine. You know, we've got a load ready to go. But you know when you have something and you think, do you know what, I think I just need to admit defeat with this one and chuck it in the bin. Look at that. Hey, I mean, I'm literally going to have to scrape that with a spoon to get that off. 
Like it's literally in her armpit, all around her neck. <laughs> Jesus. Baby. You're so, so wiggly. Guess what time it is. It's booby time. Is it? Oh, she doesn't do it to me. My nose is too big. She's got hiccups as well. Haven't you? So, stick her on the boob. Gets rid of hiccups. She's not been uh, sleeping very much today because she slept for seven hours last night. Oh, my God. All that walking must have taken it out of her. So, uh, yeah, do walking. <laughs> is your hiccups all gone now? Yeah. Sorted. No more hiccups. No. She's been very vocal today. Aren't you? Very vocal. Oh. Lots of ah and oohs and agoo. That's my personal favourite. Agoo. <laughs> right. Time to say bye bye. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>